really hope, 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 hoping you recognize who I am. Oh. I, I really hope I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Businessman 1A. Takia. What? Takia from Dragon Maid. Takia? Oh, I got you. I'm sorry. Come on. Why did I bother? Thank you. I'm going to do some stuff. I, I just wouldn't up a really? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box. <laughs> okay. It's okay. You're doing great. <laughs> that would have been actually a really funny cosplay. That would have been amusing to me. <laughs> How often does somebody do like a random like just person in the anime that has no name? <laughs> you know? Yeah, cat 1A. Uh, <laughs> It's level five. I guess. I guess we can start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so I am Sarah Wiedenhoff. I am a voice actor. I my most notable roles is a uh, Toru from Dragon Maid and yeah. a Zeno from Dragon Ball. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's there's a lot, um, but yeah. <laughs> um, I guess this panel is called is Sarah We Have 101. QA. QA? Alright. <laughs> I was like 101. How to be a Sarah We Have. Uh, first, make sure that your cap is off of your bottle and so that your motions might accidentally go like that and just cause a chaos. Because that's what I do a lot. <laughs> I cause chaos. I am a blood. Um, anyways, uh, Q and A. Anybody got any questions to start off? I am going to be asking actors lots of questions. So uh. I went to a uh, previous anime convention in December called Ikikon, and they went to a panel called Getting Into the Industry. And I'm curious, how did you get into the voice acting industry? Um, I uh, I started off with um, doing a lot of musicals and theater and uh, show choir, choir, like anything entertainment related you can think of. I was in it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, even before that, I was in ballet, and like I would try like one thing after another. Just it's always being in front of people. Um, and I did that all throughout my high school to a little bit of college too. Um, surprise, surprise! I only got my associates. <laughs> um, but so I started with that, and I moved around a lot because my dad was in the Air Force. So like I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to get into. All I know is that I do love doing art. Um, before I did, did all of that, or when it's voice acting, I was I was an artist, and I, I mean, it's still an artist, but um, I moved down here to Texas, and I learned that there was a dubbing company nearby, and I was like, that's kind of neat. It could be kind of fun. Um, and so I researched it and got myself onto the uh, open audition call waiting list. Um, and it took like, six to eight months to even hear back from it. Like at some point you're like, maybe I just didn't make it in or something. But um, yeah, I just, I applied to it because I happened just to be nearby this place. And um, I happened, I didn't get any, uh, any of like the main roles. So like most people don't just waltz in there on their first audition and get a main role in something. Um, but they kept calling me back and that's really just how it started. So yeah, I, took a, I took a risk with uh, all the acting background. It really paid off. It really did because I remember Jerry who was my first director. He was the person I auditioned for. And uh, like not too long ago, he told me that about 100 people had auditioned that day. And all new people, and I was the only one that made it because I was the only one that had an acting background. So I, I can't stress like, how important that is to have with you. Any other questions? Right up here. What's your favorite voice line from Dragon Maid? What's your favorite voice line from Dragon Maid? From Dragon Maid? Um, well, I do love her D for Dragon. That was a good line. I love that she like repeated it a few times, too. Uh, she, she's had a lot of good lines, though. Yeah, that's up there. Any other questions? Over here? What's it like Simon dubbing like, all of these shows? Oh man, <laughs> you know, like this was kind of a recent thing, Simul Dubs. Um, beforehand, we had like two 
weeks or so to get things done, and now we have one week, and it's just gotten so much more stressful. Um, I miss the bi-weekly ones. But most things, I don't remember it being like this. I remember us like doing DVDs, basically, and they would just come out like that, and people would have like, to wait a long time. But um, it's kind of stressful. It's fun. I like having to come in every single week and know that I'm going to get, you know, I'm coming in for something and I'm going to have money at the end of the week. But um, it's hard on your life, like, as a person with that because you can't really leave for one more than, like, a week at a time. And that's, like, during the entire, like, year. Like, just continually. Because, like, every season there's new there's new anime to be dubbed. And if you're in something and you have to be gone for more than like two weeks, you might, you get the chance of somebody uh, recasting you, or at least for like an episode, they have somebody come in and do it for you. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard. It's like, how do I tell my mom, like, I can't stay for more than a week, even though you live in Florida? Yeah, <laughs> it's rough, but yeah. It's just, I think it's very stressful on a lot of the actors. But it's still fun. Uh, anyone else? Does that mean you're based here in Texas, or? I'm based here. Uh, yeah, I live here in Texas. Yeah. Woo! -hoo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Hey. laughs> um, actually, I used to live here when I was like five years old. Not here specifically in Wichita Falls. <laughs> I'll go there. <laughs> it's a black hole. My brother went to college in Wichita Falls. Oh jeez, God. The balls aren't even real. They're handmade and they're always dirty. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I've lived here before, but I randomly moved back here when I was like, it was like, what, 1920 ish? Yeah. Been here for a while. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just, you know, Sorry. I got no <laughs> Uh Anyone else? Oh, okay. Um, how is it like playing a childlike voice uh, for Zeno in uh, Dragon Ball? <laughs> That's really fun. <laughs> um, those, those, I remember the auditions for it when it came in to me. I was like, what is this thing? <laughs> what is this thing? Um, and they gave us the reference to the Japanese actor. And um, I did two different takes. And one of it is like just like doing it the way that they did, you know. You know, and it was like, yeah, it was like a full on like little child. But then I was like, you know, like I was looking at his face and he's kind of like, <laughs> I was like, I think he probably would be like a little bit more creepy. Like I, I know like they they went for more childlike in the in the Japanese stuff, but no, they had a little bit about him. I was like. I don't want to go full on cutesy. I just want to have like a little bit of something there that's like, yikes. <laughs> um, and that one too, like it was at, like 200 people at audition for that. And most people did the cutesy boy voice and they weren't looking for it. Um, I think it was between me and some, someone else, I don't remember who, but they were stationed in LA and it was really just about who's there, who's more convenient to have there. Um, but yeah, I love coming in for him. It's like, I'm laughing after every freaking take I do with him. <laughs> and was like, you, just like one where I don't have to cut out the laugh would be great. <laughs> 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 it's like, I'm in, I'm like, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Back here. Just in general? So, yeah, maybe most important. Hmm. Um, well, <laughs> I have a lot of the snaggle tooth girls, so mo they mo mostly kind of feel like very similar in ways to me, but I do love playing them. You know, like Aika from Showman Sample, Toru, uh, some sort of like Yori from, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Castletown, Dandelion. Like, there's a lot of them that look very similar. Um, but, let's see, my favorite role in general that I enjoy playing. Um, 
<laughs> it's kind of, um, <laughs> I don't think very many people watched it or like knew about it, but there's this character, his name is Floof, <laughs> he's, he's a little kitty cat, um, and uh, it's in Monster Hunter Stories, was it? Or what's, I, I can't remember, it's something like that. Um, and there's this, there's these five cats, and they all are like, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and uh, mine was number six, Floof. And he was, he spoke in a baby, in a baby uh, format. And the person actually who was writing up script writing, uh, they made it into like baby lettering for me to say like as they had done it, but I, I couldn't do it. Like they needed to change it to normal English. <laughs> Cause like I could do it on my own, but if I see like the words love and like eh, and tripping. But um, he was just so funny cause like a lot of his lines seemed like, Just like no tooth here, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. It was fun making up like other ways to like play around with words with that, and like yeah, Chris was like dying every single time. He was like, oh, "You're so cute. I want to punch you <laughs> in your face." <laughs> yeah, that and, and uh, I think what was it Takagi? Uh, she was a little bit weird, but like I loved her sarcasm. That uh, was it called Karakai no Jozu. Okay, son. I think I did it. <laughs> but like basically every time I did a line and I heard Jeremy go like, uh, <laughs> I know I did it right. <laughs> like, he was really annoyed with it. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, anyone else? Over here. Out of all the shows you've done, which one do you want another season for? Uh, I've done, I've definitely drank many that's up there. <laughs> um, uh, I think of something else that just, um, I can't think of others that I, I would, I would know how they would go about making a second season for it. You know, like I feel like some, most of them kind of ended on a good note. And it would be okay if they didn't come back. <laughs> uh, maybe Keijo. That would be fun too. Yeah. Keijo too? <laughs> I, I'm scared to see what new <laughs> tactics they would have for that. Like, uh, oh gosh. <laughs> uh, anyone else? I believe in you. Question or something? Over here. or whoever can pull from, you know, t just about any different uh, studio, like LA-based actors and, and New York or whatever, um, does that, how does that make you feel about the competition, or does that, uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to phrase this, but what do you, how do you feel about that? It's rough. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, Funimation, like that, Funimation is indeed the uh, dubbing company that holds Dragon Ball. But there is another company called Overtron, and they actually um, do most of the dubbing for it. And that has Chris Abbott is in charge of this place, um, and all of Dragon Ball. Um, and whatever kind of, I got the auditions from them, and usually when I get auditions for me to send in, it's for them, for like random things like, uh, I don't know, like Smite, like all kinds of different games. Um, and it's hard. Especially for me, because um, most of the characters that they have that are women look like women, like full-on raging women. You know, all the curves, and like they're like looking for a certain age, right? They're like she's around like nineteen to twenty, but I know you're looking for like a, a twenty-five to thirty sounding voice. <laughs> They're like, yeah, most of the roles that I see coming in are for, for things like that. Every once in a while, I'll see something that's like, I could maybe do that, but even then, it's still, like, it's hard because, like, there's probably a hundred other people auditioning at the same time. So, yeah, it's, it's hard. 
and especially when there's people from out of state also coming in for that. It's competition, you know. <laughs> it's not as boring as it looks. Believe me, I'm stressing. <laughs> Cartoon called True Tales, um, and there's like a bunch of like little animals and stuff. So I'm hoping to outbranch to think more things like that and more games in general, because that's I don't know, it's kind of been like a little dream is just to go out and do all kinds of different things, not just anime. <laughs> anime is not it's not gonna treat you well. <laughs> it's not where all the money is. Like. If you have a voice for it, it'll it'll help, and you'll probably be able to have a job frequently or so, but you can't rely on it. Um, yeah, anyone else? Over here? Do you have a home studio? A home studio? <laughs> to record your own stuff? Yeah, actually. Um, whenever I have to do like last minute auditions and stuff, that's what I go for. Um, I do something like where I just use my closet, um, and like I was, I did the cheapest version possible because I am poor. <laughs> but you put foam, like mattress topper foam, all around in your closet, and then uh, just have a microphone stand and a microphone and all that jazz. And then I also was able to build in like a little wooden shelf for my laptop to be on top of because it's. Things having to hold your phone for everything you mean, like <laughs> what you're trying to act. Because like I kind of fan dubbed like anime, like but I'm on yeah. a break. I'll tell you I'm gonna be at VIP autographs, but I'll tell you. But anyways, but like I have this I have bunk bed in my room and under it's like my little studio. Like I do art and sewing and like do oh. my voice work in it and it's like it's kinda like that. Oh that's nice. Is it is it like actually like another bunk bed underneath it or is it no, like that just, little area underneath? It's that little area. I love those. It was like so nice. Yeah, because I love like the, the whole like Swedish thing, like the Ikea, like saving space and like having as much use out of it as you can. But yes, I do have a home studio. I'm moving out of it though, so I have to think about what I'm going to do next. <laughs> um, all my roommates wanted to go to an apartment for some reason. Yeah. Anyone else? Over here? What microphone do you have for your home studio? Um, I chose an AKG 420 perception. Nice. That was my that's actually my first microphone and I had it since I was like oh my gosh. Oh my god. I think I, I, I bought it in like 2012, 13 and it's still been going strong. Um, I don't know if it's really correct for my vocal tones and everything, but um, it still did the job, you know? Like, it's good all around. What I would really, really want is the ones that are in Funimation right now. I, I can't remember what they're called, though. I think it's, what's that? <laughs> is it Neumann or Newman? I it, it, it looks like Newman, but I think it's pronounced Neumann. In German, they say Neumann. So Neumann? Boy, boy. Yeah, that's fine. I like your version more. <laughs> yeah, that that is the dream. That is the dream. Um, there's this other microphone I need to ask Jeannie about. Um, I forgot about it. She, there's like this little transportable one that's like, and uh, she could pick up everything. She came into the into like the loft area, and I was like watching Dragon Ball or something in my room. And I had it on low, like really low, and she's like, Sarah, can you please um, just like pause that for a second? It's picking up everything. It's even picking up like the 
the plane like five miles away. You know? <laughs> um, but it sounded amazing. But yeah, we need to figure that out. Any other questions over here? Um, I started kind of dipping my toes into it when I was like, I'd say like 17, 18, like I was starting to like kind of get a feel for it. Um, but then it wasn't until I was like um, 19 to 20-ish where I was like purchasing an actual mic and like wanting to try to get into it. Um, and that's when, when I started doing that, I was doing, um, auditioning online for, uh, well, there was one that I made that was Honey Pop. It was a, it was a dating simulator. Yeah, I, I, like, yeah. I, I've heard people, not, not that I've actually played it, I've just, I've just heard people talk about it a lot. Yeah, I, that would I feel really bad for because I loved my character, Celeste. But um, my mic at the time, like, it was a good mic. It was my 420. But for some, I don't know why, but I, I was forced to use my stepsister's ring because everyone was home at the time and I needed to get these lines done. And the mic was being weird. And it kept on like, I had it like this so I could sit on the floor while it's going on. And then like the mic stand like slowly, slowly kind of like this part. So like it sounds like you can hear me going like this. And like a lot of people commented on too. Like she sounds like, like her mic quality is like so different from everyone else. I'm like, no, okay? <laughs> I did what I could. <laughs> and I felt really bad because I mean like it was a nice game. Like how how are you gonna go into a game with a mic like that? Or a mic setup like that? Um yeah, so I started out doing things like that where I was just auditioning for uh, you know, originals as much as I could and then I finally went into Funimation. Any other questions? Over here? Uh, do, do you get a, do you get any opportunity opportunities to use, to use your voices outside of work? Um, <laughs> but like like just just your everyday life. Um, every once in a while, I, I work at a at a at a restaurant part time, like on the weekends sometimes, um, as a host. And there's this little intercom thing where I can every once in a while I get to like be like, Nancy, party of ten, your table is ready. <laughs> you know? Like I get to play with that. <laughs> Sometimes I'll mess with the people back who are like the busters or any of them. I'm like, Alex, get table 72. <laughs> and they're like, you're not supposed to use it like that. <laughs> and why is it here? <laughs> um, those, those are mostly the times that I really use it. Other than that, um, I, I, I don't really have a reason to. Um, other than joking around with friends. Um, but most times, I, I think a lot of people are probably guilty of this. Uh, I get a little anxious and nervous in front of new people when I go out to like uh, food places or like if I'm asking a question to one of the nice staff members somewhere, like the employees, and I'll, and I'll suddenly, I'm like, I'm normally, I'm like around here, right? Um, but when I get to somebody, I'm like, oh, hi, can I, can I, can I get a number, can I get number six, please? Yes, <laughs> thank you. That's me, like, I get, like, just a nervous around, like, 45 years, and, like, you just calm down. Yeah, and my dad or whoever's with me at the time, they're like, what, what, what's with that baby voice? What are you doing? What are you doing right now? What is that? <laughs> it's like, stop noticing it. Just leave me alone. I'm doing my best. All right, I'm out here. I'm doing it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Over here? I know some people talk about once in a while something is kind of pulling in and say, hey, can you kind of read these lines and see if it's going to be useful? But how do you ordinarily find out, okay, this is this new anime and you want to be in this character in there so you know who you audition for? How do you find that information? Um, like online? How do I find that? Or just like at fun of, like fun like, For, yeah, for new anime, um, they usually release it out to the public, and everyone when we when you know there's a new anime, everyone will know. Um, but um, the auditioning process doesn't really start for like I'd say like a few weeks or so because we're still finishing up the old ones. 
So people don't have time to worry about it at that moment. Um, but there aren't always auditions anymore because of, like you were saying earlier about the simul dubs. Um, most people, like the directors, they have like a handful of people that they know and they're comfortable with, and they might like every once in a while they might outstretch to a new actor here and there. But uh, because it's gotten so stressful, like most people, um, if they have a good sense of who they think would be good for a character, they would just ask them to come and see, hey, can you come in for this person? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then that's when you find out that you got a new role in, in a certain area. They're like, okay, cool. That's how that happened. But when they do have auditions, you don't get sent them. Like, you don't get that prep, unfortunately. We don't even get the prep for it, um, for going into the show. Like, we don't get the script. Like, we're new. It's, like, organic to us as soon as we get there. And we just have to, like, immediately get into it. Um, but for Funimation auditions, if there is one, they'll have binders up in the front, and they'll be like half and half. Over here is the male side, and over here is the girl side. And um, you just flip through the book of like whatever the person had typed out for you, and they have like little lines and like a little bit of like vague here and there, like this is about this character. Um, and then you go in and just audition for your for your top three characters, and if the director kind of thought, hey, I kind of was thinking about you for this, so they'll be like, hey, can you try this character too, at this time? And they're like, yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's as far as the auditioning process is going at the moment. There aren't that, there aren't that many. Uh, but they do happen, because there's a lot of directors who I'm sure. Uh, anyone else? Besides voice acting, what are some of your main hobbies? <laughs> um, I am very artistic, so I like to do all kinds of things that are uh, on that side of the brain. Nice. Um, I enjoy cooking and uh, crafts of all sorts. Uh, I like trying new things like, I don't know, like clay and like weird stuff I find online. I just want to try again. Um, and mostly when I uh, do art, I'm more into doing like uh, drawing or painting and stuff. But um, so there's that, and I love singing. Um, and I also love playing games. Those are my, those are my top hobbies. I exploit all of my, my creativity Ooh. as well. Ooh. Um, I like games too. <laughs> you? What are your favorite songs to sing? Songs? Um, <laughs> I'm kind of eclectic. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, I was my, my dad loved the uh, the 70s and the 80s, and so I grew up with mostly that. So like, there's there's so many old songs that I can like jam to. And they're really they're still like they hit me to heart. Like I love them. Um, but. Um, Let's see, some of my favorite songs just like kind of like start singing out of nowhere is Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. And then I think like Landslide is, I, 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 I love Fleetwood Mac, there we go. <laughs> it's one of my favorite artists. Um, that and there's also some jazz songs too. Um, by, oh, I can't remember her name, forget it. What's up? Um, I want to love that will last. That's one of my favorite songs too. Um, yeah. Anyone else? So, what are your other favorite voice actors besides yourself? Like people you love working with, you love hearing all your shows. Um, let's see here. Uh, obviously, I, I love Jeannie Tornado because she is uh, she's my roommate. Um, but also my, my good friend. Uh, she also has a beautiful voice. I don't know if you heard her before, but um, I think she's she's in Darling the Franks. She's a what's that Co Co Coco or no Coco? I don't know. Coco, yeah, Coco. She's Coco and she's a sweet baby. Um, and then there is let's see. Uh, I kind of just want to like talk about more like newish kind of people, honestly. Um, like, not that I don't like the measurements and everything. Um, uh, let's see. There's also uh, Justin Briner. Um, don't tell anyone he's my voice crush. <laughs> 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 it's 
it, I love his Nico. Like that 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 guy has got some goddamn range. Okay. One one time I had him uh, say like profanity in Nico's voice, and it was it was <laughs> it was beautiful. Um, yeah, I love the last little bit goes up really low. I'm like, Justin, can't do that. <laughs> can't do that to me right now. Um, let's see, yeah, Deidre, Mr. Brighter, let's see. Um, um, I can't really think of everyone. Um, yeah, there's, there's a few of my favorite people. It's a good girl and female balance, I think, so far. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, sort of break into the uh, voice acting industry. Did you just audition a bunch, or did you meet people who were? It took a while. Um, I I did audition for like everything that um, the talent coordinator asked me. Like, hey, would you be able to come audition for this or that on this between these times on these certain days? Like, I, I would jump on that, like regardless. And with even like even if you don't get anything, the thing is that like every time you audition for something, um, a director is able to learn about you. Like, oh, that's a new person. I don't think I want them for this role. Maybe I'm not comfortable with them right now, or like, maybe they just weren't fitting the part. Um, but I'm gonna put them in the back of my pocket. A lot of times you audition for something, and if you don't get any of like supporting, even you will find yourself in a wall session for the anime. And um, so, yeah, like I would also audition for whatever came, but like, you know, auditions aren't that, um, that common. Um, it, it took a long time though. I'd say like about a year to almost two years did Funimation directors, all of them finally actually meet me and know who I was. Um, but it started with Jerry and for a while he, he was able to keep me as like his personal little little tiny girl voice, like that he had to himself. <laughs> and I remember, I really, I remember. It was like I can't remember. It was like Tyler or Chris, but one of them. Like I heard you were really good, so I uh, I had to come in for like for this thing. I want you to try it out. I'm like, okay, cool. And I come out to the lobby one day, like several months later, because like, I hadn't seen Jerry in a long time after that. Like I've been bouncing around with several different directors after that, and uh, I just see Jerry standing in the hallway. Kind of looking a little bit defeated, and, like doing this little thing. I, I love Jerry. He's so freaking cute. And he goes like, he's just kind of like, I'm like, hey, buddy, so what's going on? I've seen you in a while. And he's like, yeah. Everybody found out about my little girl voice. <laughs> 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 like, with like a sad child, like his toy was taken away from him. Nobody knew about. Um, yeah, it, it, it takes time, honestly, like most things. Um, but one, one of like the best things I've done, thankfully, because I'm uh, one of those people who smiles at everybody no matter what. It's like my uh, nervous habit. I was like, hi, how's it going? You know, instead of like ignoring the person that's coming down the hallway and like doing that awkward like you don't exist thing. I would always be like, hi, how's it going? So, you know, avoid that whole weirdness entirely. But every time you do that, like at some point when I was doing that, um, Justin Cook, um, I several times did that, and at some point he's like, he stopped, he's like, I'm doing great, thank you. And he goes like this, he's like, no, what is your name? I'm like, Sarah. We didn't have to. <laughs> he like looked at me, you're like, he's like, you know what? You, I, I've seen you so many times already, and like, like, you know, just by you saying hi, and it's just a, in a welcoming manner. Every single time you know you talk to me, you're auditioning. And then like that day, like, uh, I think he had to come in for like a movie character or something like that. So like, I would, it's actually a good idea to just talk to, him, just say like hi to like anybody you see, not like you know just for personal gain, but like it wouldn't hurt, you know. That helps. Thank goodness for my nervous habits. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think they would help me at, at any point in my life, but they did. Um, anyone else? 
Over here. Are there any shows that are only in Japanese that if they got translated to English, you would love to be in them? Hmm. Um, probably uh, Kabato or uh, Kamini Todoke. Those would be fun to be in. Um, I don't see them ever being dubbed. I don't, I don't think they ever got that right. Shame. Discrimination in the dubs. <laughs> Anyone else? Over here? Okay. Um, uh, I mean, I'm stuck in between, like, you know, uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember the name suddenly, like, under pressure, like, oh god, who is anybody? Um, oh, what was her name? Sawako, right? Sawako. It would be in between that and, um, uh, what's the other girl? The girl who turns out to be, uh, pretty mean and, like, acts like she's a nice person. Does anybody remember her name? I can't. It was something like grandma ish apparently, that she hated hearing. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the, yeah, the little blonde girl too. She, she could be fun. She, she was very angry. Um, but I think it would be fun to do a very breathy character. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, just like out of characters, or just something to do. Uh, it's probably <laughs> one of my favorite things is to give a voice to like inanimate objects or things that have like no means to talk for themselves. So like basically like fur, like a lizard or something. You know, like I'm just trying to go across this wall and you know just trying to do my best. And you just come by and you do this. <laughs> you know, like, I always. Like everyone around me is like, why did you have to do that? Now I suddenly feel bad for this thing that I did. <laughs> it's like, I love doing that voice. I do. I think at some point I need to do that, and it would be great, and that'll be life goal. Ow, <laughs> 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 I'll let you guys know over here. What would you say that you find to be a good source of uh, finding uh, auditions like you had mentioned? Um, like online? Yeah, yeah. online in person and stuff. Um, well, uh, gosh, honestly, like, I haven't really been jumping on the saddle again and, like, looking for those sites. Back in the day, there was a place called a Voice Acting Alliance, and that was my go-to, finding all of those things. Um, nowadays, I think there's places like voiceacting.com or Voice 101 that you could hop on, but it's like a, a like a weird paying service. So I think it's kind of strange. I'm like, wait, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just I have to, in order to be reputable, I have to pay a subscription apparently. <laughs> Um, but it's it's kind of hard. Like if, if you like research some sites and you can find some pretty good ones, and I would go for those and search through the originals. Originals, you gotta do the originals for your portfolio. Um, that that could help. Um, but I that's why I'm saying this is because I've been doing a lot of overtime and things are just coming to me because I'm I'm getting lazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like whenever you find things, just go for it. Do your best. But beware of like projects that look like they're not really gonna go forward. I've I've gone to a lot of uh, there's one I can't remember what it was called, but it was a game and there like, it was the like, auditions were weird because it was like all on Skype and there's like three people auditioning you. And um, and it's funny because like they gave you this email and they're like. Um, under no circumstances are we going to be hiring any amateur voice actors, so if you are, please do not um, respond and do not send auditions to us because you will be rejected, kind of thing. I was like, oh, that's kind of rude. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's, that why I mentioned that is because at the end, after I did it, not that I think I'm like the best person in the world for voice acting, 
as most people who sounded like they just picked up a microphone for the first time. I had a little kid, little kid radio microphone box and like press a little mixtape. <laughs> I was like, what that email though. <laughs> and that one of those projects even happened to be like one where they're like, we're gonna sometime get this out and they still haven't gotten it out. It's been like five plus years now. Yeah. <laughs> Beware. Even if they look good, that doesn't mean that they're going to be successful. Um and it felt really bad too, like the artist for that, like she was really good and she was being paid like terrible. Like maybe like one to five dollars per per character design or something like that. It was like a full blown, full character. Full body. And I'm like, how are you doing this? And she's doing background. She's doing it all on her own. All of the art for this thing. And including the animation. And she's being like paid like maybe thirty dollars for like a set of things. I'm like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you people? Um yeah, beware for some projects, but still try for them. And if they don't work out, they didn't work out. You got other things going on. Anyone else? Back here?
Okay. <laughs> I have important things to learn. <laughs> um, yeah, those are my top ones. Um, growing up, I mean, I watch Pokemon too, but um, not as much as the others. Any other questions? Over here. What was that? Sign your what? Books. Books. Um, yeah, I actually I do have an auditioning uh, autograph. autograph. Like I can, look where I am right now. I have an autograph session at two actually. If you want to stop by then too. Yeah, the the um. Uh, yeah, he has autograph session at two. Yeah, but yeah, right? the, this the schedule says um, and, and this may be outdated, but it says uh, VIP autographs two thirty to three thirty, and mm -hmm. then autographs three thirty to four thirty. What? 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 what, what, what? Special autograph. Right, right. I got this one here too. Let's see. Um, Saturday, two thirty. It says autographs, two thirty to four thirty. I don't know. Maybe a one plus. It's VIP. It, yes. Yeah, no, it's probably because it's mixed in with VIP and then standard people, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Well. Well, so I guess that's something. <laughs> you just have to play it by ear and see. Yeah. What yeah, I was like, wait. Okay, <laughs> well, 1A, good luck to me finding that. This is the only one of my know so far. Like, I've been no, stationed here. Panel room 1A is right next door. Right next door. Cool. <laughs> That'll be fine. I don't know. I just have to remember the panel room to definitely make me a phone. Watch it. Yeah. Ooh, I'll do my best, guys. <laughs> Any other questions? Also? Awesome. Over here? What's my favorite Pokemon? Uh, hmm. Um, what is it? What is it? You know, like, I, I don't want to say, like, it's, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love, like, out of the starters, my favorite was Charmander. Um, but, like, out of, like, the random ones? Ah, uh, oh gosh. Ah, I guess I really haven't thought about it. I think I would be eclectic with my Pokemon too. It's like, you're all cute, you're all adorable. You're all kicked to be inside of my balls. <laughs> I will play with you when I see it. <laughs> um, I, I generally like the little lizards and stuff. I don't know why. I just freaking love them. Uh, anyone else? Oh, maybe I do have one or something. Yeah, I have one. Over here? Did you actually play Pokemon games as well? Or? Um, I was I didn't really play it too much. I, I usually I watch my brother play because like I have no idea what's going on. Like I was a little bit ditzy when I was young. Um but yeah, my brother played his Game Boy and all that. I started playing like later on. Um, I actually wasn't really into playing games all that much until like middle school. Um, like I had a Nintendo 64 for the longest time and I would play with my dad every once in a while, but there's a lot of games I wasn't willing to do on my own because I was a little, a little wuss. I was too scared of most things. Like The Legend of Zelda at right time. I time. There was this building and there was like, I think it was like a map, the wizard's building somewhere off on top of this cliff, and inside of there, there's a guy with all of his chemistry set, and then there's this like watery pond thing. And you can go down there, and my brother went down in there, and you look into one of them, and there's a shark hidden inside the cages, and just that turned me off. Like I've never been this way. When I saw the undead, I'm like, nope, not happening. Uh -uh. Not doing that. Not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Look at the two things. I'm like, okay. Um, but it wasn't until like uh, high school, I had a GameCube, and the game that came with it was a freebie. It was called The Wind Waker, um, Zelda, The Wind Waker. And uh, I didn't actually play it, because like, my goal was set on other games that I had. And at some point, I, just, like, I looked around and I was like, hmm, you know what? It, it came with it. Why don't I just try it out? And then I was like obsessed with Zelda after that, and all things game related. Um, I played uh, Pokemon Moon and uh, a few other games I can't really remember, but it's also because of people around me bought them, but I myself don't really 
go and find him out. I don't know really why, honestly. I'm troubled. <laughs> Uh, there was one of those called Pokemon. Uh, it was like a fan, a fan made one. Insurgents, I think it was called. Pokemon Insurgents. That one I was actually playing, and it's actually really fun. Um, gotcha. All right. Um, yeah, if, if you guys happen to come across it, it's it's, it's really fun. Like it's, it's a bunch of people made it. It's like fan made, and it's got you can choose the light version or the dark version, and the dark version is like. Um, like intense, like adult, like not like they're gonna show you breasts and stuff at all. Like, like dark themes. Like, there's these cults and stuff, and they're like sacrificing people in order to make these uh, enhanced Pokemon of sorts. And you find these like a bunch of Pokemon that are, like, have been mutated in some way. Like Charmander is normal, cute little Charmander. He he was turned into like this ghostly looking Charmander. He's like, dark and kind of like. It looks really cool though. Charmillion? Was it? Was it? Um, Charmillion? Charmander. But yeah, I think they both would if you char if you uh transform them, you would turn into it. Um but yeah, they're creepy. And uh it's actually pretty fun. So uh, any other questions? We got like what five minutes left? Over here? What was that? Favorite part about voicing Toru? Favorite part? Um, uh, I, I mean, I, I loved her antics a lot, and I loved her enthusiasm. Um, I especially liked it when she got really angry. Like, that was one of my favorite parts whenever, like, you're like, are you cheating? Like, those screaming lines, and when it turns into her crying after that, I. Oh, I love that. Because like you just hear her go like, are you cheating on me? And then she's like, Miss Gilbert is like, really? Are we doing this right now? And she goes, <laughs> <laughs> I often did those with her and like, oh, oh god, this, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, I like those. Any other questions? Back there. Do I ever lose my voice when I'm acting? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do actually. Um, I might not like use a specific character, but I will go into like this weird voice so people will know that I'm not being serious. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of doing that. I'm doing, like going to weird like, how dare you? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's fun doing that. People will know when I'm when I'm not being serious. Any other questions? Over here. Convention horror story. What was that? Convention horror story. Convention horror story. I again, I haven't really um, had too many. This is my third con, and I haven't I haven't really had anything that's been too bad yet. Just it's been really normal. And I'm really I'm really hoping for normal for a while. <laughs> for as long as I can get. Um I mean, it might be a little bit rough though with my kind of a personality though, because like I'm usually welcoming to all kinds of different people and like I'm creepy myself. I'm creepy myself. M most people like at some point they're like, okay Sarah, really? <laughs> Just like did you have to say that? Like someone had to say it. It's not me. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm sorry. I'm not apologizing for who I am. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't had anything scary yet. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> and anyone else? Over here? One last question. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Uh, oh, um, I think there's probably a few places I would like to go to, just because I like I like traveling. Um, the first place I want to go to, which I'm actually kind of planning to, is Denmark. Um, and that's because my family lives there. Um, my mom's side of the family lives in Denmark because they're all from there. 
Um, and actually, I studied abroad there a long time ago when I was in, uh, in high school. And it was like far too late for me to actually like, become super fluent with the language. Like if they had found out about it much sooner, it would be better. But um, yeah, I love I love Denmark. Um, I love visiting there. Another place, obviously, is like I would want to go to Japan, especially for the food. <laughs> I'm a glutton, <laughs> but I really want to try like real like no kidding sushi and ramen. Mm -hmm. Wait, what is it called? Eurasia. Eurasia? Uh-huh. And it's in Austin? Yeah, it's in Austin. Ooh, I know what we gotta do tonight. <laughs> yeah. There's also a place called Uchiko. What? There's also a place called Uchiko. Uchiko? In Austin. Authentic Japanese, no forks. No forks? <laughs> All chopsticks. Finally. Reminds me of a place where I went to last weekend after like, my family reunion camp I do love using chopsticks though. Like, my mom's like, do you always have to every time going to like an, an Asian restaurant of sorts? Like, I always want to use a chopstick when I can. I'm like, why do you have to <laughs> make me look like this? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, well, and I guess that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> and also, there's a, there's a mock draft session around 2 30, 4 30. I don't know which side of that is VIP, but yeah. I think. Some Next people can come in yeah, that aren't. It's, is it really? Is it all for VIP? Is it just like a portion of it? Uh, 30, 30 minutes VIP. Yeah, 30 minutes VIP. Okay. Cool. So like, then at two, wait, then at three. Two thirty. Three for, for regular. Cool. Three for like regular. Right. Well, thank you guys. I'll see you around. There's also a Dragon Maid Cafe later that I'm attending. That would be fun. What is that? Let's see. That's at five o'clock. Meet me there. <laughs>